right, first of all, uh, Dr. John B. Alexander, uh, a little bit of background on him educationally, uh, the University of Nebraska at Omaha, BGS in Sociology, 1971, Pepperdine University in 1975, an MA in Education there, Walden University, a PhD in Education in 1980, University of California, Los Angeles School of Engineering and Applied Science Engineering Management Program in 1990, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Sloan School of Management, Executive Program in Management of Complex Organizations in 1991, and Harvard University, John F. Kennedy School of Government, Program for Senior Executives in National and International Security, 1993. Uh, Dr. Alexander has been um, an investigator of and a developer of non-lethal warfare systems. He is an absolutely fascinating person, and I trust that we have him on the line. Dr. Alexander? Great. Uh, good. We've got you. Um, I, you know what I think, uh, uh, Doctor, I think I should allow you uh, to introduce Colonel Corso. Uh, many people will not know who Colonel Corso is. They might know he's got a book called The Day After Roswell, and that might be about all they know. What would you say of Colonel Corso beyond that? Well, I first uh, met uh, Colonel Corso about a year ago, and he came to us with a, uh, a very unusual story, uh, and that had to do, of course, with alien technology and the things that he has written about uh, in his book. Uh, one of the things that struck us, of course, was uh, his credentials, and uh, of course, sometimes people fake them. So I spent a week in Washington uh, checking out his background, uh -huh. and I went to uh, the Pentagon, the National Archives, uh, the uh, Army uh, military history. I also went to the Army War College because a key person in uh, all of the things that he talks about is uh, a Lieutenant General Art Trudeau. And Trudeau uh, in uh, the Army and military at all was uh, a legend. Uh, in fact, he was so well known that when the Army started doing their um, oral histories, he was one of the first eight people to be interviewed. Now, where this gets important is that during this interview, Phil Corso sat in every session with the general. So here it is, uh, 20 years after they both retired, and they still remained very close friends. And one of the stories is he actually got his boss fired at one time, which is not usually career-enhancing, uh, but survived that and remained to be uh, very uh, close friends. Uh, so what I can say is when Phil says he was in the National Security Council, uh, he was in this foreign technology division uh, in the Pentagon. Uh, should not be confused with the thing at Wright-Patterson. Uh, this was a small Army thing. Basically, it was Phil uh, and a, a position that he held uh, until he retired, uh, looking at foreign materiel. And, of course, he claims that this, uh, some of it at least, was from the uh, crash saucer. So it would be fair to say the colonel is a former Army intelligence officer. That's true. All right. Uh, he worked in re uh, with a heavy background in research and development. Anyway, I've got a little bit more on the colonel, uh, and I'd like to read it. Uh, former intelligence officer, yes. Uh, part of the Allied occupation forces uh, in Rome from 1944 through 47. At the end of World War II, Operation Paperclip which brought German rocket scientists to the United States. During the Korean War, he served under General MacArthur, and from 1953 through 57 as a member of the National Security Council under President Eisenhower. It was in 1961 that Colonel Corso was appointed Chief of the Army's Foreign Technology Division. It was then, on a certain fateful day, as the Colonel tells it, that a file cabinet was wheeled into his office, the contents of which he was asked to examine by Trudeau. Corso was advised the contents were not, quote, run-of-the-mill foreign stuff, unquote, and was suggestively told to research the Roswell file before writing up uh, his summary. Among the items in the cabinet, 
The colonel says he found a mysterious shoebox of uh, tangled wires, a dull grayish silvery foil like swatch of cloth that he was unable to fold, bend over, tear, or wad up, but that bounded right back into its original shape without any crease. I wonder if uh, any of you recall from the movie that exact um, a description. Uh, visually, you saw that material in the movie Roswell. And though it was a dramatic reenactment, that uh, was obviously very much like uh, is we have described here. And uh, it, that is just the beginning. So uh, there are many, many questions. All right. Uh, let's see if we can bring him on. Uh, Colonel, are you there? I'm here. Okay, we don't yet have uh, Dr. Alexander back, but, uh, but we definitely have you. And what I'd like you to do, if you'd be willing, is to um, add to what uh, Dr. Alexander said and tell us about your own background. My background, uh, well, I came in the Army in 1940 when the war started, right after Pearl Harbor. And I was drafted, and I went to officer school, and... Uh, I came out as second lieutenant, and uh, they put me in an artillery outfit. Right after that, I got transferred to intelligence. And I was sent to England, got promoted to first lieutenant, and I joined British MI-19, and they sent me to Cambridge for three weeks. And I learned intelligence under them. And from there, I went to North Africa. Uh, I became an interrogator, prisoners of war, with, and worked with the British and with their commandos. Then I went to North Africa. And from North Africa, I participated in the landing at Salerno Harbor in Italy. Then I came up through Italy all the way to Casino, and I was in the battles of Casino. And from there I went, I landed on the beach at Anzio, and then went into Rome. And there they made me Assistant Chief of Staff G2 Intelligence and Intelligence Security Chief of Rome Area Command. And uh, I participated there in reestablishing law and order. I destroyed the Gestapo and SS nets. And from there I came back to Fort Riley, Kansas. So your career to the, to the point that uh, you met the general was a, a very honorable uh, and fairly normal uh, military career. It was in combat at the time. Because it was, we were fighting a war in North Africa, Sicily, and Italy. And then I joined the general. I went to Korea after that. I, I participated in the Korean War, and, and I joined MacArthur's staff over there. And I came back. And when I came back to the States, I joined President Eisenhower as one of his military aides and National Security Council at the White House. And there my career sort of changed. I was in the White House for four years. And from there I took command of a, of, of a missile battalion, the Army's missile firing range at White Sands. Mm -hmm. Then I took a combat missile battalion, and I had atomic warheads even, to Germany. And I became, I stayed in command 18 months, and then I became Inspector General of the 7th Army. And from there I came back to the United States and General Trudeau had reorganized research and development of the Army. And he sent for me, and I joined him as a special assistant and chief of the Foreign Technology Division. So you had a very, very long military career before you met General Trudeau. Yes. Yeah. Well, I met him when he was chief of Army Intelligence, and he sent me to the White House. Okay, but at all this, uh, all this prior military service, Colonel, yes. uh, you never... Uh, laid hands on uh, any sort of extraterrestrial no, anything or even no. had a hint of it. Everything you did was no, very... No, I didn't. Not until I got to Fort Riley, Kansas. Was very terrestrial and very normal and very heroic. I'm very normal, head. yes, it was. <laughs> um, and that's where, I guess, uh, with General Trudeau, in what year? I joined him. First, uh, I was in Army Intelligence, and he sent me to the White House. So I stayed there for four years. And then uh, I came back to the United States in 1960, and I immediately joined him in research and development. What did you do at the White House, Colonel? I was on, on the policy. Uh, the, uh, the Operations Coordinating Board was uh, the, pol 